Earlier this year, I spoke to Paul Scully Power, the first Australian born person, Australian born, to journey into space, world expert in remote sensing, a world authority on aerospace. He has received every imaginable award of scientific distinction, including the NASA Space Flight Medal, the United States Letter of Commendation, the Laureate of the Albatross, which is Oceanography's Nobel Prize, the Order of the Decibel, the highest award in the field of underwater acoustics. And so it goes. He's spoken to me before about what he calls the next world revolution, where big companies realise they can make billions of dollars in what is called space down here. That is entering space, these are my words now, to, to revolutionise the way we live, the way we communicate, the way we feed ourselves here. He has said within five years, there'll be hundreds of thousands of small satellites in low Earth orbit, all involved with things on Earth. Virtually thousands of smartphones communicating with one another. He previously told the story on this program of what he said was not far off, where the farmer would over breakfast be able to download an overnight survey of his farm from space with specific smart sensors. The farmer would look at the analysis that's been done overnight, check the action that has to be taken that day. Based on that analysis, tap his smart watch and send those instructions to the farm robots and the farming begins. I think I'd be out of my depth, but since we are talking about China and energy, I want to go back to this issue that I have canvassed with Paul Scully Power previously, space-based solar power. There is a US-Australia joint venture called Solar Space Technology. Let's go to Paul, though, because this is extraordinary stuff. And we'll try and keep it simple, but it is amazing. Paul, congratulations on a lifetime of amazing achievement, the first Australian to journey into space. My listeners will be wanting to say, what was that like? Well, it's one hell of an adventure, but the one thing that sticks in your mind is you look back on Mother Earth and you look at it, it's just a brilliant blue and white ball totally surrounded by the blackness and the infinity of space. But the incredible thing, Alan, is you look down over Europe, for example, and you cannot tell where the boundaries of, car of countries are. And yet, if you look at the history of mankind, all wars have been fought over boundaries of countries. It really makes you think. Mm. Well, let's go to this energy issue. Are the Chinese in the vanguard of all of this? Solar power in space. I think you're saying that space solar power would create thousands of jobs, slash energy prices, produce electricity almost 100% of the time. So you could dispatch, you're saying, baseload energy from space to anywhere on Earth via receptors, and that could be delivered for Australia with a working space power station, what, by 2028? Who in government understands this? Yeah, ab yeah abso absolutely, Alan. It, it's, it's one big idea. It's like Kennedy's famous statement, you know, we do this not because it is easy, but because it is difficult. But everyone thinks it's a pie in the sky, but it's not. Let me bring you up to date. On the 27th of September this year, just three weeks ago, the UK government released uh, their big review on space-based solar power. And they found that it was eminently feasible, uh, it was economically viable, and that could be done by 2040. So there, there's some great input. Also, so, uh, the US sorry. President, Joe Biden, has a, has a presidential policy about to be released on space-based solar power and it covers all nine agencies involved in the US government. So, and you're saying the cost per kilowatt would be about a third of conventional baseload power. So we could have the world's best carbon emission targets, thousands of jobs in manufacturing, but we'd need, I think you said, 12 satellites gathering the solar energy in space. Is China already doing this? Uh, yes, uh, yes, Alan. Al uh, China is already starting to do tests from balloons down to, to Earth to test out uh, the uh, feasibility of all this. But I've also done some other calculations. And to put it in perspective, a, a, if you take what it costs to build a, a moderate size uh, coal-fired power station, uh, that's a roughly the, uh, the cost of uh, building one of these, a similar um, uh, 
power station in space and beam, beam the energy back down on Earth. It's, so it's yeah, quite so, comparable. It's quite yes. comparable. So, so basically you're saying you develop the space satellites. I understand. I've read that stuff you've sent me. You develop the space satellites, then solar panels on the ground would be the receivers. Would we do that with the private sector or with government money? Oh, I think the private uh, government partnership is the way to go. Especially these days with people like Elon Musk, for example, getting into the space yes. business. Yes. You have to Do remember that only 10 years ago, 80, over 80 per cent of space business was done by governments around the world. Today, that's Don't... flipped. Over 80 per cent of space is done by the private industry today. Don't we have an Australian space agency? And, you know... What are they doing? Because, as you say, the sun always shines in space. So this is renewable energy for almost 100% of the time. Are the launch costs a barrier? No, well, they've come down by a factor of 20 over the last uh, 10 years. So, again, that we've done the costing of all this. Uh, mm. the, the cost of building one of these uh, space-based solar power stations is somewhere between the cost of two and four submarines, uh, new submarines in Australia. So that, that gives you an idea of... I know. Of the, but see, see how, Paul, why... The reason I'm talking to you, why are we going to Glasgow, for God's sake, when we should be sitting here sorting this out? I mean, you've mentioned about Avalon Airport down Geelong Way. What is happening down there? So, sorry. They're, yeah, they're, they're, they're putting in um, uh, solar uh, farms down there, but... Cannon Brooks is also building the world's biggest solar uh, farm in Central Australia. But talking about the Space Agency, this is perfect for the Space Agency because, think about it, you can also turn it round and beam that energy to the Moon and to Mars. So that fits exactly within the ambit of the Australian Space Quite. Agency. So just on this, because everyone talks about China. Now, you know, are China ahead of the rest of the world on all this, solar power from space? They already dominate ground solar panel production. Are China positioned to become the major supplier of power in all forms of solar energy, including space solar power, to the world? Yes, yes, and they've, they've actually publicly stated that and mm. it's their new initiative, the Belt and Road Initiative, will be surpassed by their uh, cheap, uh, totally clean power from space. Amazing. And have they got satellites up there now? No, they're, 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 they have the plans to do that. They're doing ground tests from balloons back down to Earth to test it out. And by the way, Alan, yep. talking about COP26, I have the absolute solution for COP26 and the Prime Minister. Yeah. And it goes like this. They've just announced the AUK-US accord, three countries, Australia, the UK and the US, and that's where the new nuclear submarine program comes from. But that's in the future. Why don't those three countries announce that they're going to combine together to put into orbit the first solar space-based... Yep. Good uh, on you. Good on you. Perfect. Why don't they? Excellent. Hey, great to talk to you. But all I'm concerned about, and out there they're viewing tonight, if China beat us to the punch, they then would control the world's energy supply. Paul, wonderful. Right. You had a wonderful. And I want to leave you. I want yeah. to leave you, Alan, with a quip. Yeah. Go on. Very quickly. The, tw the 20th century, we all talked about beam me up, Scotty. In the yeah. 21st century, we should be talking about beam me down, Scully. <laughs> Good on you. Good on you. Lovely to talk to you. Thank you for your scholarship. Keep well. There he is, Paul Scully Power. Interesting, eh? Solar power from space. If China beat us to the punch, <laughs> then they'll control the world's energy supply as well. Think about it.